good morning, happy Saturday, and welcome to another week. Um, it's a Saturday and I'm going to work. <sighs> I'm not overjoyed about this, but this, but this was a commitment I made to, you know, Colt Homes and most of their meetings are on Saturdays at the moment. And it's not a bad day to be out and about, so it's just whether my brain is actually functioning. Welcome to another episode of Trophy Stupid Vlog. If I had to guess, I would say no, my brain is not functioning. <laughs> the reason I know that is because I don't actually know whether my brain is functioning, which tells me that it's not. <sighs> oh, Summer, how I've missed you. It's the gentle pitter-patter of pouring rain. Joking aside though, it is nice just to not have to do any work and actually have a day off. Even if that does mean getting rather wet. Um, so today is one of those catch-up days where we haven't done any tidying since we got back from holiday or frankly much before we went away. Um, so we're doing that a bit. Doing some baking, it should be fun, making some interesting foodstuffs for the week. Um, and a bit of shopping and all that kind of, all that great adult things stuff. And this time next week, so next Sunday, we're having a parental meetup. Um, it's actually the very first parental meetup, which you might think is ridiculous, <laughs> and you would be right. So that'll be at a nice little pub on Kew Green next Sunday. Hopefully the weather will be better. But it's yet another reason why the flat needs to be less of a complete tip. Um, <laughs> it needs to look like a habitable, habitable establishment where two fully grown adults live. <laughs> so the weather's finally improved, as it said it was going to this evening. So I've got some uh, pizza dough proving. And Crystal's gone out for a run in training for a race for life, which is next Sunday. And I'm going for a walk concurrently. And we should, we started at the same point and at the same time. And if all goes to plan, we'll finish at the same point and at the same time. So I've just been for a little walk around one of the cemeteries nearby because it's actually ever so peaceful and nice when the sun's out. And it's strangely fascinating to see, you know, stones that have been, in some cases, there for a hundred years. Sort of all hickledy pickledy up the corner. It's much, much more inspiring than you'd think it would be. On a day like today, certainly, it probably doesn't feel quite the same way if it's grey and rainy. Hello, good morning and happy Monday. I'm on my way to a meeting, a slightly strange one, which I may tell you more about depending on how it goes. Um, but I have a question for you. When you have a meeting, do you dress for it deliberately or do you deliberately not dress for it? That's the first thought. I don't necessarily want the answers, although I'd be fascinated. Um, just something to think about. Secondly, if you do dress for a meeting, do you dress to meet expectations or do you dress to confound them? There was something I was thinking about this morning. I'm not sure there's a right answer. I'll try and give you my answer. So I think you should always dress for a meeting. Even, and that means thinking about what you wear. And even if the decision that you make is that you should wear what you'd wear anyway. But you should think about it. It is important. Uh, different businesses, different people um, expect to see different things. So do you dress to meet expectations or to confound them? I guess that depends what you want to get out of the meeting. Um, I think, as with all things, know your audience. Um, you should dress to meet expectations to a certain extent. Um, you know, it's no good turning up for a job in the city and if you're going to wear shorts and t-shirt and flip-flops I mean there's just <laughs> there's almost nothing you could say that would get you that job at that point regardless of what the interviewers say um, on the other hand if you think that there's already a preconceived notion of what, who you are and you don't necessarily like it um, then maybe you should try and confound their expectations you should certainly always try to be better than they might have expected that might mean you have to confound them. Um, or it might mean you have to pretend to be someone you're not quite yet. Um, <laughs> a little bit of a tweak, as it were. Um, so I was talking about this a couple of months ago, actually, with some colleagues of mine about um, people who came from jobs in media. 
and the whether you should or shouldn't wear a suit, which is a very particular argument. My feeling is, if it is a um, non-managerial role in media, you should not wear a suit. If you wear a suit, it shows that you really don't understand the world you're about to enter, because um, you'll never wear a suit again. <laughs> Um, but they disagree. They think you should always dress as smart as possible. I don't think that's the case. I think it's always a case of know your audience and know what they would Im expect you to look like and wear, unless that seems too absurd for you to be able to deal with, in which case maybe it's not the job for you. Incidentally, this meeting is not a job interview and most meetings that you take, I should imagine in your life, won't be job interviews unless you happen to be out of work for a long time or you constantly resign. Um, but the same kind of rules basically apply. So I'm using this meeting as an excuse basically to walk into town, um, to Hammersmith at least. Forgive the breeziness, but it is a, you know, summer in the United Kingdom. <laughs> um, for the first time I realised, for the, not for the first time, but the first time in 32 years, this summer, my summer holiday, is inside the United Kingdom. We're going to the Lake District in just under five weeks. I think, I think it's four weeks on Friday, actually. Wow, that's scary. Um, although we have obviously been to Spain. We just got back, which included one of the hottest days I've ever experienced. So I can't really complain about not having a summer holiday abroad. 45 degrees is more than enough for anybody. Um, yeah, so we're going to the Lake District in July and hopefully the weather will be very nice and sunny and we'll still be able to do some walking. But it's a lot easier than trying to get the entire family abroad, especially this year with uh, Albert being only six months old. Random thought for the day. Imagine you're a dog. <laughs> okay, I know. Just try for a moment without all the absurdity. You're a canine. You have a human owner. Every time you go to the lavatory outside, your human owner picks up your mess, puts it in a bag and carries it around. What conclusions are you going to draw from that? Look, it's the motherland where unicorns are real. We don't know whether YouTube owned this building, but it seems likely. Doesn't it, Steve? I didn't hear what you said. Who's this might be? It's got lots of YouTube stickers on anyway. Good morning. It's Tuesday, it's very wet out and miserable and not at all summery. And uh, and on top of that, uh, um, very sad news. Um, Charles Kennedy, the politician, has died. Um, and the reason that that I think is especially sad is he was something unique in that he proved that you don't have to be divisive or aggressive to be successful in politics. He was very warm, everybody liked him, well, of course the entire political spectrum regardless of his message and the way that he delivered his thoughts was ever so considered and um, yeah and he'll be missed but more than that, that idea of how to present politics will be very sadly missed. So in happier news, um, I've now got to write something. Um, I have uh, agreed to write a piece for um, Chloe's blog, which I mentioned, I think I mentioned in, uh, certainly in the Barcelona vlog, uh, wanderlustchloe.com. Chloe, um, I used to work with at uh, Heart, uh, and she's now a travel writer. So um, she's looking for guest entries, and uh, because she'd done a lot of Spain, but never Valencia, I said I was going to write something. So I really must do that now. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, but before that I have a day at Webvid and then I have a committee meeting tonight at RHP um, and hopefully in the meantime the weather will improve because tomorrow I'm going to do some um, uh, nephew time uh, down in Isha, so uh, that should be fun. So despite the fear that this will be two plugs in two minutes, I want to talk a little bit about the meeting we had yesterday. Um, not the details of the meeting, but the reason we had a meeting at all. Um, the reason we had a meeting at all is because, as you may or may not know, I'm part of a very small multi-channel network called PlaySquare, which is run by Steve, uh, Mr Higgy Pop, 
and with the idea of creating a, um, a multi-channel network that's not simply focused on collecting channels and making money but a bit more around the idea that people, smaller channels, um, can use it as a sort of forum for information exchange and ideas exchange and to help grow their channel because a lot of the information coming out of YouTube nowadays is very much focused around the big guys and the whole nature of YouTube has changed to be more focused around the money makers. So we have this nice little multi-channel community as Steve likes to call it um, focused on small and medium sized channels and trying to build something that eventually we can monetize but not at the expense of the creative. I know that sounds horribly idealistic but it's not because if you can get enough numbers ultimately uh, you can approach the kind of clients that would fit well with your brands anyway. Uh, so if you're interested at all um, Google Play Square MCN as in multi-channel network and it'll pop up and you can see all of us and what we do um, and obviously if you're interested in joining and you have a channel and what have you then there's a little contact page through there and uh, you can get in touch and if in the next seven minutes you forget everything I've told you then uh, hopefully there will be some useful links in the description below as always it's actually very warm today despite the horrible wind and the, the wet air um, it's it's very pleasant temperature and it kind of I don't dislike this <laughs> strangely um, it reminds me of the occasional day on a Swiss holiday where you get up and you go for a walk anyway besides which you can smell everything more it's really fresh it's very nice out so are you trying to sell your house at the moment I only ask that because you go down these usual routes of people saying oh you need to repaint your living room and you know it's a bit too it's too personalized the taste you need to paint everything magnolia well if you think you've got problems, trust me, you ain't. <sighs> that sort of nationalism come patriotism makes me so sad. It's just so, so terribly wasteful and misplaced. Oh, There's nothing wrong with the country. You might disagree with some, you know, with the government of the day, or you might disagree with certain individual things. I have no problem with Britain. I do have a problem with being blindly loyal to something, regardless of what's going on. We're taking no account, just saying, oh, I'm very patriotic. What the hell does that even mean? It's complete nonsense. Plus, side note, our flag is terrible. It's just, it's terrible. From a design perspective it's horrible and it just has too many negative connotations unfortunately due to a very rich um, history let's say could be worse I suppose you could have a George Cross painted on the side <laughs> that would be really another level just yeah. the problem is that in my mind at least um, outside of sporting events and royal births can you think of an, an occasion where a Union Jack or, or George Cross, if you're in England for that matter, is waved. Uh, yes, you can, I'm sure. And it will be some sort of racism or sort of um, general bigotism, frankly. But that's not, it's not unique to Union Jack. It's, um, all countries have that problem. But I just that's why I don't think you should have such an attachment to the flag. Just, Anyway, we're going to move on. It's actually turned into a beautiful evening. And I'm actually walking to RHP from Hampton Wick, uh, which is it's really nice. Don't think I could afford these houses either. Although, maybe if they paint a stupid flag on the side. I would love to be in a distance. Let's hope for a good sleep. Just get on the buggy, board. Good boy. Good boy. Ready to ride. So the strawberry picking is nearly complete. This one's been no help. <laughs> we do have a lot of strawberries. Um, Walt has eaten an undisclosed amount, let's say. It is a beautiful day in sunny Camden. It's a beautiful day all over London, finally. This is literally all I left the house in, just a t-shirt. Has paid off. Well, I say it's paid off, I've been in an office 
most of the morning. It will pay off if I manage to get out of the office at any point. It's a bit of a sorty outy kind of day at work today. And then tomorrow I've got to myself. So, if the weather's like this, I'm going into queue. If the weather isn't, which it probably won't be, <laughs> I'm still going into queue, so damn it. Good afternoon. Um, it's Friday and therefore this week uh, means I, um, I'm not at work, which is very nice. But I have been doing bookings for the next couple of months and sorting out invoices and things. And this afternoon I'm going to go into Kew Gardens to carry on writing my Valencia piece for Chloe. Um, on a Spanish theme, I had some leftover anchovies uh, from, well, you made pizzas the other day. So I turned them into a nice little tapas, a sort of white bait malarkey, which I'm very much looking forward to. This squirrel's always here. This is where he hangs out. But in a minute he'll move because he doesn't like being watched. So after the greyness of this morning and general undecided sort of weather behaviour, it's now absolutely gorgeous. It's proper t-shirt weather. So I'm going out to queue. Such a nice day. I've taken my iPad because the problem with being self-employed is you find it very hard not to work. I know that sounds silly, but um, genuinely, if I just sit around relaxing, um, then I start feeling guilty. So I end up trying to do something. So I've got a few things I need to do, but I'd rather do them somewhere outdoors. I haven't been in here in quite a while. It's very bad on my part. I blame a combination of too much work and not enough weekends. <laughs> so you probably don't know a lot about the history of Q unless you've seen a lot of my vlogs and you watch them very avidly and remember everything I've ever said. But I'm presuming that that isn't the case. So this road here, which runs sort of the length of the gardens and um, actually exits the gate into Old Deer Park at the other end, the direction they're going, um, has always been a road. In fact, it used to be a public road uh, long before the gardens were formed and it's now aligned with holly bushes on each side. But it used to be famous as where the uh, ladies of the night used to frequent this street, no less. That is true, I did not make that up. You can check it, you can fact check that on the internet if you can be bothered. Um, the only thing I would say that's quite coincidental, I guess, is that you could probably uh, secure the services of one of the aforementioned ladies for less than what it now costs you to get into the gardens. So, uh, <laughs> times they ever changed. So I spent about an hour writing. I've kind of done the backbone of it now. It just needs a bit of character and some details filling in. I um, hope I can finish it off tomorrow or Monday. Yeah, Monday. Um, right now I'm just uh, hanging underneath this pendula tree in this uh, nature made den, which is pretty awesome, as you can see. It's very nice. Um, and I've got a few of the footpaths so I can just wand watch people wandering past, oblivious. Uh, <laughs> it's ever so nice today. The weather is so good. It's such a nice time to be in queue. Summer's coming up. If you've got a day off, if you've got even the slightest inclination to go somewhere green and outdoors, come here to queue. If you know me, uh, even better, and there's one of you, and you have a bit of free time, then I can take you as a guest. So let me know. Um, otherwise you should come here anyway. Any other London related questions I could help anyone with whilst I'm here? <laughs> it's so rare that you get to see the weather like this, even, even at this time of year in London. I'm very much enjoying not doing any work. Who owns Harrods? I believe it's the uh, Qatari royal family currently. That was my little periscope-a-thon from Q. I hate vertical video. I do wish Periscope would make it so you could hold the camera horizontally. Just put the comments up the side. Anyway, if you follow me on Twitter, at Toby Dollier, then you might see the occasional Periscope pop up, especially when I'm wandering around green places like this. Oh,